Hello friends, how are you doing? Hope you are doing great. So with 2022, I am trying to launch a very new series and I hope every one of you will like it. And this series is about how to crack your F5 LTM interview. Let me introduce myself. Myself is Radhe Varma. I have more than 16 years of industry experience, taking the interview more than 10 years. And I will not only talk about FI LTM interview approach, but the general approach also when you are going for the interview, how you need to be prepared and how you need to answer. So let us start to crack your FI LTM interview. We are presenting first question and that question is explain when SNAT is required. Let me tell you guys, this question can be asked directly and this question can be asked indirectly way also. And on the upon, on the basis how the interviewer is asking the question, your answer should be tweaked. And that is why I am writing down that vary your answer as per the proper ask. If person is asking, okay, wh what is SNAT? It means the person wanted to know about the packet flow. The person wanted to know what, why it is required. What, what is the basis of that? What are the problems that are associated with it? But if person is asking some particular problem that, okay, my application is not working. And when I am troubleshooting, the traffic is going back from the server to the client directly. What could be the resolution? Then your answer should be one word. It is a snap because their interviewer is talking about that. Okay what is the answer it is built like fill in blanks so you need to put up the fill in blanks only but when the there is an open-ended question you need to explain about asnet in a uh, very detailing way so that is how we need to tweak our answer but before tweaking out the answer let me just start what is asnet before asnet let me go through what is the general uh, our you know traffic flow so let us consider there is a client. This client is coming through the internet or internet somehow, okay, and coming to our organization through the routers, which is a lot of things, but I am not considering that. I am just going to F5. And after F5, this client need to talk about one of the backend server. So this client is accessing one of the application. Now, please try to understand the packet flow. For the simplicity sake, I am taking all the IP address as the private IP address only. So let us suppose this client has the IP address 10.10.10 10 .10 slash 24. Okay, probably, but I am not considered about the slash notation over here. I am just uh, uh, talking about the IP address and the virtual server what you are created. Let us take a IP address over here 192.168.1.1 1 maybe. Okay, and here uh, this is my self IP, and over the self IP, it is internal self IP. By the way, if you are not aware about self IPs, it's perfectly fine. We would be gonna uh, pop up with you know some more uh, videos where we would be talking about the self IPs also. So, internal self IP, I am just considering the floating self IP is 172.16.1.1, and the server IP from the same VLAN will be 1. 10 and 1.11 again this is your uh, not your single arm mode okay it's uh, it's both sided because there is a both sided the functionality again if you are not aware about the single arm mode or the deployment mode of the f5 don't worry we will be going to talk about those also but in the some another videos so this is very very basic designing how traffic flow if you will talk about the traffic flow, when this guy will be uh, will try to access the application, maybe those server are hosting the application abc.com. Okay, when this client will hit abc.com, DNS will resolve the IP, but obviously it would be the public IP and there would be some kind of netting before your F5 also. But I am not going in that way again, as I'm telling you, I'm considering that DNS is resolving to your direct virtual server ip which is in our case 192.168.1.1 f5 is a full proxy design full proxy means 
it is acting as a forward proxy also it is acting as a reverse proxy also again if you are not aware about this terminology also don't worry we will be gonna pop up with these kind of videos as well now basically you can say it will be initiated two connections the first connection would be between client and f5 and the second session would be pop up in between your client and the servers with the first connection when a client is initiating a session and it need to be go to the virtual server because abc.com uh, in the dns is resolving to the virtual server ip your packet will be formed as what the source ip would be there the destination ip would be there there would be source port and destination port also let me pick that also the randomly so let us say the source would be 10.10.10.10 but obviously it is our client ip any random port just i am saying two three four nine any random port okay destination would be what destination would be your virtual server that will be 192 168 1.1 .1. and over here let us suppose your uh, client is going for the https so port would be well defined port that is 443 this will be your first packet which would be uh, get created on the client side this packet will go to the f5 f5 when wrap up this packet and will see how the traffic is coming to me it will check that okay it is uh, it is coming for one of my virtual server and that virtual server is binded up with the pool and that pool has two pool members okay these this is this should be into the pool maybe we can say the name is abc underscore pool okay and but obvious this pool can be work on this pool member can be on 80 also if we are doing the you know uh, source port translation translation also and it can be on 443 depending upon your environment so we will not be going on to that particular part currently i am just maybe you know making some changes that let us suppose this is only 80 so if it is on 80 the second part of your packet which is getting formed from your f5 from f5 to the server okay your f5 but obvious will do the will check the load balancing load balancing again check okay which is the server which is less utilized on which pool member i need to send my traffic bit all kind of those things will be taken care by your f5 and let us suppose the server 2 okay that is 11 is used in this case the source would be what and that is the very first point mostly people will make the mistake source by default does not get changed so source will be 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot 10 again with the same 2349 your uh, port number which was the random port number picked by your client but destination will get changed destination will be what 172 16 1 dot 11 and this time the client uh, this time the server is listening to your port number 80 so port will also get changed now please try to understand it your source address is not getting changed by default in case of your standard virtual server so again what are the uh, virtual server types they will be gonna cover uh, those kind of things into some another uh, videos but for the time being if you check your source address is not getting changed don't worry i will be proving it through our lab also okay please have some patience watch out this video end to end you will find that whatever i am saying it's not only the theoretical part i will be proving all of these things through the lab okay now but if you talk about the destination earlier my destination was virtual server when my client was initiating the traffic but now my destination is got changed and what is my destination it is one of the pool member one of the pool member okay so my destination is getting changed so by default source is not getting changed it is the destination which will get changed and this kind of behavior is known as dnat so we are doing destination netting by default we are not doing the source net Currently, I didn't talk about why source net. Okay, I am just giving you the explanation how packet will flow. I hope everyone is clear till so far.